Then, immediately after that, it says, وَإِنْ أَرَدْتُمْ إِسْتِبْدَادَ زَوْجٍ مَكَانَ زَوْجٍ If you want to remove or replace one spouse with another spouse, وَأَتَيْتُمْ إِحْدَاهُنَّا قِنْطَارَ And you gave one of them a large sum of money, فَلَا تَأْخُذُ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا if you wish to divorce a woman in order to wed another and you had given her a whole treasure as dowry, take not the least part of it back. Would you take it by way of calumny and open wrong? Don't think if you gave somebody this dowry because that's what the Arabs would do before that, that this is her property. And then Allah says after that, وَكَيْفَ تَأْخُذُونَهُ وَقَدْ أَفْضَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِرَى بَعْضُ the thing about the Arabic is just really is perfect because how can you take that back when one of you has gone into the other? It just doesn't work in English. One of you has gone into the other. Because what it's saying here is afda ba'dukum ira ba'd. That's what it says. It's not it doesn't say one of you guys. I mean, it just doesn't it's it's so perfect in Arabic because it's it's leaving that open, the ambiguity of that this is about, it's not about male and female, it's about one of you being with the other. It's about these two human beings coming together in this, and part of that process is the male gives the female this money as a way of giving her some independence when she comes into the relationship. There's a lot of wisdoms in that, but the point is, is that how can you take that back? You entered into this marriage giving that to her and now you want it back because you want to get out of the marriage? And then, وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَرِيغًا They have taken a heavy covenant from you. In other words, when the woman went into this relationship in a compromised situation, because a woman goes into the relationship in a compromised situation generally, with rare exception, the point is, is that she has a covenant that you're going to treat her the way God commanded you to treat her. That's the covenant that she took. And what a mithaq. I mean, what, this is your contract. You went into this thing saying, I'm going to do what Allah tells me to do with you. I mean, don't you realize the awesomeness of that contract? What are you going to say on Yom Al-Qiyamah? Because that's what she went in believing. When you did that aqad and you said, Ala kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulillah. Isn't that what you said when you got married? That's what you said. That's what the man says. You think that's a light thing? That's mithaq ghalil. That is a heavy ghilva. It's a heavy covenant. It's harsh if you break it. And I know so many situations where the Qur'an calls it mu'allaqa. I mean, seriously, I have been in so many situations where a woman is, the husband's married, he's somewhere else, he won't grant her a divorce because he doesn't want her to get remarried. It's just all spite. It's all diseases in the heart. Or they won't give him the, the dowry, the mu'akhar. I mean, last week, somebody asked me about this. I'm going through his divorce, and I had a mu'akhar of a large sum of money. And that's what it says, Qintaran. I mean, this is the thing. We didn't leave anything out of this book. I mean, Allah didn't say dowry. Right? It could have said dowry. Why did he say Qintar? Because it's a lot of money. And then when Umar was up on the minbar and he said, Ya yuhannas, la tughalu fi muhuri nisa'ikum. Don't give extravagant dowries to these women. Right? That's what Sayyidina Umar, he's Amir al-Mu'mineen. Qamat imra'atun wa qalat. Ya ibn al-Khattab, atamna'u ma'a a'tana Allah? And she didn't say, Ya Amir al muminin She said, Ya ibn al-Khattab, I knew you and I knew your father. And <laughs> Are you going to deny us what Allah has given us? And then she read the ayah. And then Umar, when he heard it, he said, Kullu nas afqahu min Umar. All of you know more fiqh than Umar. All of you are more educated than Umar. I mean, there's a woman standing up. He's on the mimbar. And he made a mistake in the book of Allah. And she said, Because it's her haqq. And again, that shows you that thing of, if you don't stand up for your right, nobody else is going to do it. Right? I mean, it's that thing again of, she's, she's the one, look, this is our haqq. This is our right. Because the man, I mean, it's to his benefit. Oh, great. Omar's saying, lower the 
the dowries, right? This is the uh, homo economicus, right? Economical man. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you've given them this treasure, don't take it back. أَتَأْخُذُونَهُ بَهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينَ Do you take it back by way of calumny and open wrong? You know, إِثْم مُبِينَ It's a clear wrong. You've oppressed somebody. The rights of the wife. The wife is entitled certain rights in marriage, and they're basically as follows. The two primary rights that are mentioned is a dower, a dower and maintenance, nafaqa. So the dower is mahar, and there's a khilaf about it, and there are hadiths about the best women have the lowest mahar, which is also an encouragement in marrying poor, because people will often try to get into marriages for economic reasons and things like that. And it's usually not a good reason to go into a marriage. So the idea of if somebody's only asking a little bit, it enables poor men to marry women easier. Because if everybody wants high dowry, then it becomes a big problem. Imam Malik is rubu dinar, which is not very much. It's less than $20, basically. And in the other ones, it can be even less than that, so... The maintenance is being fed, clothed, housed, and having domestic help and necessary appliances to maintain the house. And it says, عَشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ So it would be what's known in a culture. If you're living in Mali, ma'ruf is different from living in Santa Clara. I mean, literally. You have to take in the orf of the place you're living. So the maintenance of a woman, you can't deprive a woman of the things that the society she's living in, people at her socioeconomic status are accustomed to. So if you're living in a society where women have washing machine, these type things, and it's, that's the custom of the people, then she should be afforded those type of things. I mean, that's the idea there. And obviously, I mean, al-rijal qawamun ad nisa men are the maintainers of women, that it's an obligation to maintain women for a number of reasons. Now, conditions that make binding upon the man, maintenance binding upon a man. If a woman has not actually consummated the marriage, so you had the aqad, but the woman didn't consummate the marriage, in other words, there wasn't uh, sexual relations, obviously lawful sexual relations, then the man is not, he does not have to pay nafaqa. It's still on her father or her uncle or her brother, whoever, the agnate relative that's responsible for her to do. And the reason for that, obviously, is istimta, is part of the haq, you know, the maintenance that comes out of him also getting his rights, and that's a right. And also, somebody who was married as a minor, and I wanted to mention also about that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, there's different verses, uh, meanings to that, and one of the meanings is, don't force her to marry who she does not want to marry, which is an opinion of some of the imams, and that's what Shaykh Abdullah bin Bayya said uh, should be the, the amal in the West, in America. He said, you know, even though there are some imams that give the right of the father to be mujbir, that that is not something that should be practiced here. That should be seen as more of an urf thing in other places, but it would be inappropriate here. And that's nadharan lil ma'alat. It's looking at the consequences of actions. So... And that is a valid opinion. And I told you the hadith of the woman who went to the Prophet ﷺ and said, my father wants me to marry this man just to elevate the man's status a little bit. He's from the family, but from a lower. And he's making me do this. Do I have to do it? And he said, no, you don't. And then she said, well, I've already decided I'll do it, but I just wanted to show women that he couldn't force me to do anything. And that's a sound hadith. So th- there was a woman who wanted to show other women she was going to do what her father asked her to do, but she just wanted to show other women, you don't have to do this just because I'm doing it. This should be a choice. So that's there. But if she was underage, and I mean, if people say that, you have to understand it goes both ways. That The parents can marry a minor male as well. So it's not just the woman. It's not, it goes both ways. I mean, that's something that's very alien to this culture now. It didn't used to be. I mean... Child brides were very common, even in America in the 19th century. You can read the literature about child brides and things like that. So things have changed, and and that has to do with urf, 
well, orf muhakkam, you know, orf is something which is the custom of people, is taken into consideration. So the orf is taken into consideration there. So here there would be things totally inappropriate. In Mauritania, for instance, a woman is generally an adult by the time she's 12 or 13, which is the way it used to be uh, in most of the world. I mean, uh, William Durant, and his wife's name was Ariel Durant. He married her, he was already a, an adult. He married her when she was 13. And she was his lifelong companion and wrote, helped him write those history books. So he wasn't a pedophile or a child abuser. It was an accepted norm at the time that he got married. Well, now uh, it's seen as something unacceptable. So that's the orf of a people, but generally, that was not the case in the vast majority of the world, including here in the United States. And that's part of the problem with how moderns see themselves. They always assume that the way they do things is just better than everybody else. And this must be the best thing because we're doing it. Well, maybe it's not the best thing. Ariel Durant probably had a very rich and fruitful life. And if you asked her about it, would have she changed it you know, to have done this or that? be interesting to hear. I can't answer for her.